offering a sanctuary in Glade Park called Steadfast Deeds. It's kind of a mouthful. Sometimes people want to be Steadfast Deeds. And I have with me today a horse named Takakota. Takakota came from the Paisley Desert in Oregon. And we, we adopted him for a program uh, through Mustang Heritage Foundation called Mustang Million. And it's similar to the Extreme Mustang Makeover, if anybody's familiar with that, in that you take the horse in 100 days or 120 days is what our time frame was, and socialize them and get them ready to go to a competition. Um, I'm not a particularly competitive person, so this was a little interesting for me, and we did it, and I have this woman that I told you now, he's a really well put together package. And he's also our face man. So a little history about Stephanie's, when my husband and I moved to Grand Junction in 2005, um, we came from Cheyenne, and my husband is a ordained um, you know, not a Methodist, Methodist pastor, pastor. So, so he knows people. people. And we moved, moved here to serve the, the church downtown. downtown. And, and I was really excited because we were coming to a place where I could be really close to all horses. horses. And, and I had a half Mustang, Mustang at the time. So we, so we moved down here with her. And she did it by herself. And I got acquainted with friends of the Mustang very quickly because I knew that's what I was coming to. And there was a gather in 2007. And then we adopted, adopted our first Mustang. Mustang. And, and when we, we adopted, adopted our first Mustang, Mustang and somebody asked this question, question a little while ago, what, what happens to the horses if they don't get adopted? adopted? Um, this, this particular, particular gather, every, every horse, horse is going, going to be adopted. adopted. I'm, I'm sure of it. it. Absolutely <laughs> sure of it. But, <laughs> yes, yes. 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 So our intention. Uh, but that, that particular, particular gather, there were horses, horses that were 55 horses were brought off and 44 were adopted. So, so 11 horses went to the holding facility. facility. And, and that was my first exposure to the holding facility. And I couldn't imagine how that could be such, such a great place for a horse. And so, so that's, that's what we started to set about things about, was to address the holding facility and how can we yeah. give a horse a different life than standing in the holding facility for the rest of their life. So, so adoption is one of the best places to go. Um, we also, in the process of learning the complex social system of the wild horse and how we can apply it to families, our families can function just like the wild horse can. We have a, a mom, a dad, a lead mare, and a lead stallion, and then we have family members. And oftentimes, in families, when, when we, we get, get into, into a, a, a rift, we, we all go different directions. directions. But, but the wild horse would never do that. that. It's, it's not safe to separate ourselves from the group. group. So, so that's, that's what we look at is, what's, what's, the, the, what's, what's the, the connection? connection? And how do horses help people be more authentic and present and congruent? And it's all based in relationship. A lot of you listen to George, he talked about relationship. Relationship is what they want, it's what we were designed for, and it's one of the best ways to find connection. And when there are small spaces like this, we can kind of expect that there's a little bit too much pressure. And, and so they can calm down, and they can be together, and they can also be apart, but they still be together. So Dakota's found um, the, the gray horses left away. And, and, and that's, that's what they, they do. do. They, they graze about 17 to 20 hours a day, sleep in 15 minute intervals here and there, and they save energy for true emergencies. And so that's what we teach people at Step Out Speed is about being more wild horse like. So, what is it about relationships? Um, when people talk to the dead bastards, the first thing they want to do is pick up a scoop of hay and put it in the horse's face. Why? Why would we do that? Anybody? Who wants to grab a house and have 
has a meal with Rawa. Who's around the table? How is the relationship happening around the table when we're eating? And so that's one of the places we find relationship is in eating. So I really believe that that run to the hay and hand it to the horse to say, I want to be in a relationship with you. And this is the only way I know how. How else can we be in relationship together? So we're, we're talking about people and horses and the horse-human connection. How else can we be in a relationship with this guy? Just like you are now? Yeah, exactly, exactly. He left that hay. And he said, I have to be. <laughs> <laughs> but he walked away from the hay. Because it's safe in relationship. When, when we are out of the wild, the wild horse will discipline young horses by sending them away from the group. And they stay sent away from the group until they ask for forgiveness. And I've used that loosely. But they ask to come back into the safety of the group. Because if I'm out there by myself, it's not safe. This, this horse will respond, respond to safety. Um, That's their basic need. need. It's safety. safety. What, what does that mean to them? them? Well, this, this, is is a, this is a prey animal. animal. What, what are we? Predators, predators yeah. yeah. We have a lot in front of our head. We, we use language, language to communicate. And many, many of us, not everybody, but many of us smell like, like a big mac when we approach the horse. And so they're going, oh, I don't know, what is this all about? But when we find a place where we can be more prey-like, using our right brain instead of our left brain, the horse says, hey, this is kind of cool. I like you because I want to be in a relationship. I want to feel safe. And safety comes together. So this guy, he will respond to you. To safety, safety and whether he feels safe, safe or not. And, and he's, he's, do you see it up on top of the hill? Do you see what he's, he's looking, looking at? Way up there on top of the hill. Bigfoot. See that yeah. person walking? <laughs> he spotted that. that. Oh. So, so in the wild, the horse is walking to them. He's like, hey, what are you guys doing? Yeah. So, so in the wild, the lead barrel sees something like that, and she stops. She stops. Chewing, she stops breathing, and everybody keys on her. And as soon as she says, that's safe, or that's not safe, and then, I mean, it's instant. It's instant. It's instant. It's not even work. They go, or they go back to grazing. When the mountain lion walks into the pasture, the horses know if she's being congruent. Congruent means I'm on the I'm the same on the, on the inside, inside as, as I am on the outside. outside. So, so for example, the mountain lion walks into the pasture and she is hungry. Her, her belly is growling. Her being is hungry. She's hunting. But on the inside. On the outside, she's going, I'm not going to eat you. I'm not going to eat you. And the horses go, we're out of here. Inside, inside and the outside, outside are, are different, incongruent. Not a lion can walk into the pasture and have a full belly. And she's she saying, I'm not going to eat you. I'm not going to eat, eat you. And she can walk right past the group of horses that nobody ever looks up because, because, because her energy is congruent. So when, when I do, do a coaching session, we talk mostly about congruency. Um, congruency in relationship. Authenticity in relationship, and the, the whole thing makes us either come together or go apart. Have you ever walked up to somebody and the hair on the back of your neck stands up? And you go, wow, what's that about? But we still say, hi, I'm Tracy, nice to meet you. Even though our, our uh, crop detectors are telling us that might not be a safe place, the hair on the back of our neck is standing up. We don't trust that. The horse, the wild horse trusts that. And so they respond to that congruence. Um, we have three brains. We have a head brain, we have a heart brain, and we have
have a gut brain. Now, if you look at the horse, in contrast, how big is the pivot brain? The functional brain on a horse is about the size of a walnut, so I got a bigger brain mass-wise than he does. What about the heart? How much bigger is the horse's heart than mine? Five. Yeah. Five times. Five, six times. And, and if you're secretary, then you're probably even bigger than that. that. Now, look, look at this gut. Look, look at the size of that gut. Look at how small, small my gut, gut is. And, 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 and this, this horse trusts his gut. I think, I feel, I know. So a horse is one that trusts their gut to be able to be safe and protected. <laughs> and they don't use their, their voice very often. So what I want to offer is when you're looking for a horse, whether you're looking at a horse this weekend to adopt or if you're looking at a horse in the future, look for ways to connect. Connection is what they crave. And when we find the connection, we can make that, that work. Who, who's ever walked into a room and you go, wow, what a hot guy that is. And then he, he opens his mouth. And you go, whoa. <laughs> you are good, but I'm not so sure. So when we, when we chose this horse, I looked at him and I was like, He's a hot guy, and he had he was on the internet. But it took several of us, several interactions with him, to actually have him say, "Yes, what I want to do when I come to be at Step Down Steve." So, so there's a whole lot of interaction. Mostly, we only rely on this head piece. We'll talk ourselves out of it. We will pick something that maybe we don't connect with because it looks good. Hello. The horse uses all of their senses when they're making decisions. It's called multi-sensory awareness. <laughs> multi -sensory awareness. He's looking, he's listening, he's smelling, he's feeling, he's touching everything. And it's in that, that multi-sensory awareness sorry, that he makes decisions. So, um, who wants to fly? Who wants to come in and... and, and Help me for a minute. Come on down. I know you. you <laughs> so, what I'm going to ask for is to, to watch how the horse responds to congruent energy or to energy that the person offers in the relationship. And it's, and it's very simple. It's very, very subtle, and with, with this broken, broken, the, the horse has, has all the voice of choice. choice. When, when I have him on the end of the lead rope, well, he has a little, little bit of voice of choice, choice, but he only has about 60 feet of voice of choice. How much is coming in? How much is coming in? Nice to see you. Okay, so, so what, what I want you to do is introduce yourself to Dakota, and then let him know what your intention is. What would you like? Take a step back. back. There you go. Now, introduce, introduce yourself, yourself to him. Just, just like, like you would. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just. I'm going to touch you. Okay. All right. So when we meet a person for the first time, do we, we say, say hi, Tracy, and, and you say, I'm over. Uh huh. And we might shake hands and be nice, right? Or do we go, Hi, Tracy. I've never met you before. Wow. I have no idea. Yeah. So when so when you're on this horse, if, if I walked up, up to him, him see, she's already, already touched, touched him. him. If I walked up to him and I go, oh, I want to see you, I want to touch you, I want to be around you. He might just go, whoa, not, not ready, ready for that. that. So, so I invite people to introduce yourself, yourself just, just like you would, would to me. me. And, and then, then let him know what you want to do with him, what your intention is. Once the horse knows about our intention, they're like, okay, that's cool. Especially if it's uh, not a good one again. Yeah, so go ahead. Did you introduce yourself? No. <laughs> 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 okay, take a step back. 
and in the there he made a prediction so give him a second Mm -hmm. right, right now, now he's um, in a little, little bit of flight mode. He's, he's moving away from, from us because the energy becomes incongruent. And for me, when, when I'm teaching, I'm very much out of my body, so I'm not present like the horse is. Okay, so, so this time, time you want to introduce, introduce yourself before you ever touch it. And then, then tell him what you want to do. And that sounds funny, you're talking to a horse, but it's okay. Try it. Now, do you see how he turned his head away just as you pushed his energy? So as soon as he stepped into his energy bubble, he started moving his head away because he was not quite sure what she was looking for, what her intention was going to be. So try again. There you go. Okay, so stand up and be confident and just say, I'm River, can I pet you? Yeah, no, that was different. So the, so the first, first time, time she walked right to him and he went, mm, I'm not so sure. And even that teeny little, little movement, even, even a head, head turn, turn away or a foot lean away, the horse is not sure of your intention or what you're going to do to him. So to be in a really congruent and healthy relationship, it's really important to always ask and always say, what you want to do so that they know that you're not going to hurt them. Sometimes, sometimes they know, sometimes, sometimes they know, but at least it slows us down long enough to be intentional about the connection. So it's very, very subtle. <laughs> and George talked about some of those subtle movements of the horse. They respond in the tiniest way, and if we are aware and connected, we see it. So when I have horses in the pasture, we go out with brushes, and we say, would anyone like to be brushed? Typically, they line up. And, and so, so we hold the brushes, the brushes and, and we ask, would, would you come in and help me? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we're going to have a break. The horse will choose the brush. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to ask you to use a couple of brushes that are different. Yeah. Yourself up again. Let him know what you'd like to do. 
So now, where, 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 where do you, you, where do you feel, feel in your body right now? Yeah. 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 What does that awesome feel like? like? It's like uh, excited. Uh -huh. You know, it's kind of like. Okay. And you, you see how he's doing it. Oh, yeah. yeah. he did it. We, we, we started, started everything in two ways. Which, in, in my interpretation, is he willing to share a meal with you. Remember how I talked about what we did? We sit down and eat with each other. Yeah. So he says, well, I'm being interested in sharing a meal. I feel safe. Yeah. So they're all, they're all really in safety. If, if I'm not safe, safe, I can't eat, I can't drink, I can't have a relationship with another horse, I can't sleep. All the things of the basic needs of a horse, if they're not safe, they can't do any of those things. So we're always looking for a place to safety. Yeah, and so the horse feels safe, then it's a, it's a time to approach. Sorry, it's my way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, looking, looking for, for connection, connection thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Looking, looking for connection. connection. Where do you feel it? What does it feel like when there's, there's connection? connection? Usually, Usually for me, me if, if I, I can, can find, find myself, myself standing on the ground and very <laughs> If, if I, I feel myself standing on the ground and really connected to the earth, so I'm present, present in the moment. moment. Horses only know. Right now. 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 And, and if, if we're, we're into the next appointment, or we're still back here, worrying about the fight we just have with our spouse, the horse is going to be like, yeah, you're not, not safe. I'm going out, out of here. here. <laughs> I have a... Uh, we do a lot, most of the work I do with our horses is at liberty, and I even move them in groups without haltering anyone. And I, I needed to get to an appointment in town, so I live about 30 minutes from the appointment. And I still needed to let the horses out, and I was taking them from one pasture across to another pasture. So, you know, anything can slow them down. And everybody followed the lead mare with me, with her following me. But I was in such a hurry. Oh my God, half of her and the other half ran up the other fence line. Oh my gosh, now I'm really late. Because I was already down the hill. And I wasn't in my body. I wasn't present. I wasn't good enough. And several of them took off the other fence line. And now I'm going, okay, well. I could either get really frustrated and continue chasing them around the pasture, which is not effective, or I can ground myself and be present and allow them to come back to that gate. And that's what happened. So there wasn't any way I was going anywhere until those horses came out of the pasture. It was like, ah, we're going here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. That that that's right. right. That's right. That's right. right. Um, I, I don't know, know if you know this, this but oftentimes they'll shed the brush with both nostrils. <laughs> so the horses see a whole different picture on this side than they see on this side. Their ears can hear two different things going on, and their nostrils function like that. They're sensitive, and one side processes one thing, and the other side processes the other thing. So you can see if they're really connected to something, they'll touch it with both sides of their nose, and they'll look at it a couple different times. So that's kind of what was happening. Yeah. 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 Okay. Who else wants to play? Oh, come on. Oh, there's Dakota. Lynn loves Dakota. Okay, can you step over please? There we go. There she is. That's a good boy. Yeah. This is my friend Lynn. And Lynn does um, animal care fair at Church of the Tiffany in the middle of October. And so Dakota and I go to that event and help everyone learn about Mustangs at that event. So, what's your intention, Lynn? Uh, what would you do? What would you like to do with him? Would you like to be would you like to be petted or would you like to be brushed? Do you have a preference? Do you want to be brushed? Okay. Do you have a preference? 
Does he have a particular one he likes? Or just, just grab them and let him pick. pick. I usually grab two different ones. Okay, here you go. You choose. Mm. Or a different map. Yeah. 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 See okay. this? He just turned away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we said he doesn't want a brush, you started licking it too. Yeah. Would you rather have so maybe you just put the brushes down and give him some scratches. Like now sometimes, it's like children, and if your kids are growing up, they have to pay you for the behavior of the person, and how much did they like it, or want to go, or talk, or the whole way. But when you still have the need to do that, the care for that. So there's times when we have to ask the horse to be in a relationship with us, even if they don't want to, because it's and then that's usually what I explain to the horses when we have this thing like that. And then you gotta get in the crazy game, or get to pick up your babies or the fairies. There are things, all of those things, patient with their ability to flee. So we're gonna put them in the crib, pick up their feet, we tie them to a post. That is the way they're going to flee. What do you mean? 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 What do you or get in the trailer, or pick, pick up, up their, their feet, feet when they want to flinch. Trust? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you're talking about trust, too. You have to have the trust that you have to be really full. And my experience with these wild horses is once they trust you, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, 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 going to be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're they're like potato chips, too. You can't answer that one. Yeah. 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 That's why there's 20 of them. How many do you have? have? 13. Yeah. Uh -huh. 10. Yeah. So you still have a lot of them, too. So, yeah. Sometimes they need another home. We help them find another home. Well, we, we help that, that next, next person build the relationship. So, so when I socialize, I do um, trust-based, relationship-based, and it's present moment. Present moment. So, so the horse is, becomes, becomes comfortable with, with the relationship, and becomes, becomes comfortable with trust, trust and then and I teach to be a doctor to be able to have that horse trust them as well, because we develop relationships. Just like we do as people. Develop the relationship, find the place of heart connection. If you're looking at a particular horse in the pen, notice when you make a connection, where do you feel it? How does it feel? Um, I oftentimes get little bubbles right here when I feel like something is really the way it is going to be and the way that it feels connected for me. Everybody's different. The other time, time that I don't feel like that, I have pain in my shoulder. And it's, it's like, like the weight of the world is on my shoulder. And so then I have to ask that And feel that bubbly feeling again. And any time that we're in relationship with people, I... Yeah, more interested in that horse. But he's doing good. Yeah, he's doing good. So. He walked right over to this lady with the green bag. But what happened for you when he came towards you? Yeah. Did you feel that in a particular place in your body? In your brain? Okay. I think you could let go of the thought. What does it feel like? If you were describing it in a book where the person doesn't know you and doesn't know what's happening here, Describing it in a book. What's that feel like? It's a read like. Nice. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. So, if you were looking at these horses, that horse that you used to have that makes that light and heart. No, I brought two blue ones. Yeah. 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 Yeah.